All right, uh, Safia, I believe that you are up first. Great, thank you. It's so great to be with you and thanks for that um, lovely introduction. My name is Safia Noble and um, as mentioned, I'm the co-director of the UCLA Center for Critical Internet Inquiry. I'm also an associate professor of information studies and African-American studies. And um, I'm joining you this morning from Los Angeles. Um, I increasingly find myself embarrassed in the wintertime to see a, a flood of sunshine all over me, but that is indeed the case when you live in LA, that it stays kind of bright and sunny. So I'm joining you from my dining room um, this morning, and uh, I'll just say that fourth grade has just kicked off as well at our house. So on occasion, um, a child or a dog or any anything can go down in my background, but I'm I appreciate your generosity um, and patience with me this morning. Um, I wanted to share um, so, some brief remarks about kind of today and tomorrow, because I feel like these are the temporalities that we're always kind of um, thinking through as we um, imagine the internet. Um, in fact, probably uh, few of us on, uh, and of course, increasingly fewer and fewer people remember um, the internet of the past. So, you know, we're kind of always in a temporality of thinking about today and, and, um, this image that I have uh, up on the screen, if you can see it here, is a photograph from Kai Lawful um, Bien. Um, it's an image from a collection that he has called A Topography of E-Waste. And one of the reasons why I put this image here as a kind of representation of today is because I think it's so important for us to stay attuned to these very material, um, physical, tangible dimensions of the internet today. It includes, obviously, um, the whole global supply chain and system of relationships, the uneven and unfair distribution of harm um, in the case of people who are tasked with um, breaking down our hardware and um, remaking components. Um, we often do not see these workers, these people, these human beings, and of course, um, even further removed from our vision today of the internet is the incredible cost, the price that um, both extractive uh, miners um, and workers um, experience, um, mostly in the global south, um, in Southern Africa, in Australia, um, as well as um, uh, a, a tremendous and growing e-waste industry in West Africa. And, you know, my work has been focused for the last, uh, well, most of my career, but especially as an academic, has been focused on um, people who are harmed, vulnerable people, people of color, women, um, people who can't always speak back to systems of power that are introduced upon us. And so <clears throat> I invoke this image here, this, you know, this um, worker who is in a cloud of um, smoke that comes from burning um, down uh, hardware so that you can get to the kind of um, minerals and pull those minerals out. Um, I recall my um, work two years ago in Accra and visiting, um, you know, a, a rather um, famous and infamous um, waste site um, where the kind of normalcy of expecting that waste should um, uh, fall upon what was previously an incredible, impeccable, beautiful wetland in the heart of Accra um, indeed turning into um, one of the more famous um, uh, and well-known waste sites. And of course you can read about um, the many um, uh, the many studies that have been written about e-waste in Ghana. So um, I, I think, you know, part of why I wanted to invoke this image is to really remind us of the cost of the unevenly distributed internet. And this of course is one of the reasons why um, it's so 
crucial that we imagine the future. Now, of course, when I'm with my students at UCLA who are computer scientists and engineers, and they get very excited about thinking about the future of technology, of course, they're interested in software. There's software applications and making apps. And, you know, I challenge them. I say, oh, why, why don't you take this phone and make a phone we can eat when we're done with it or that we can plant and grow a tree? Um, with or you know like really imagine a radical um, uh, future of technology rather than something that requires this kind of imagery that you see here. Now um, looking to the future um, I also brought um, another image and I, this is an image by um, Nicole Dixon who's an artist from Oakland which is one of my um, beloved towns that I've lived in cities and this is from her um, collection Transcendent Icon and one of the things that is so in, in, incredibly arresting and beautiful about this image for me is that this is a black woman who is a dark-skinned black woman um, you know, I myself as a light skinned black woman understand kind of the complexities of colorism and caste um, and these systems of oppression that exist in our communities and around the world. And um, when I look at this image of um, this, this black woman who is so incredibly um, filled with peace, I mean, there's just no way to not see the profound um, image of peace and stillness and freedom in um, in this image by Dixon. And this, for me, is the imaginary of the future. It's an imaginary where people who have historically been oppressed and or contemporarily oppressed can live in this space of peace and of freedom and of expansion, which you can see in the kind of imagery behind her. And so I, I just wanted to invoke these kinds of metaphors here for us, these visual metaphors for the future of the internet, because I think what often gets lost is the human beings who are so profoundly connected to this idea of an interconnected web. Um, so many of the conferences um, that I attend are really um, fantastically obsessed with um, the future of the technology rather than the future of the human beings. Um, and of course, we often think, um, you know, this image of freedom for me is a stance in stark contrast to the kinds of images that we've been seeing on the news in the United States since um, uh, the recent white supremacist uprising um, and attempt to take over the United States government. Now, this is a little bit of an ex oxymoron. Un unfortunately, I don't have enough time to unpack this idea of white supremacists taking over the U.S. government because some might argue that white supremacy had already occupied um, U.S. government. So we'll have to leave that for another time. But I will say that the images that we've seen um, of people uh, and their imaginary about what freedom looks like on the internet often is these kinds of images, people invoking Confederate flags, nooses that are designed for women and for people of color, um, um, hate speech and all manner of atrocity and of course platforms that mobilize people for hate. This is really, I think, in many ways, the way people also imagine freedom and a, and a, and a freer um, um, future. Um, that freedom being a future that does not include people who look like us. And so this is, um, I guess, the provocation that I want to open up for us and kind of remind, um, remind us that, um, you know, the, the problems that we face um, as human beings, for me, are not solved by a better application. They're not solved by a better platform. They don't rest in platforming and deplatforming. These are fundamental issues that um, that stem from things like global wealth inequality and social inequality, environmental collapse. Um, you know, I was talking to someone yesterday about the um, kind of the future of the internet, and she wanted to talk about blockchain. And I said, you know, there are billions of people on the planet who are thinking about where we will get food again, how we will be employed again, 40 million Americans um, unemployed right now in the face of COVID-19. So these are some of the provocations that I think while we um, imagine a kind of future that is driven by technology, 
um, let us not forget about the in, important research um, and studies and art that are coming forward that are showing and highlighting the way in which many of the technologies that are in our imaginary are over-determining more inequality, um, will sort us into opportunities and sort us out of opportunities. And of course, this has been a huge focus of my work too. Um, uh, maybe I'll leave it there, but I hope that this will be a bit of an opening for um, um, imagining um, the future of our technologies. And I guess I would say that, um, let us not forget that um, without a future of equality, of um, wealth redistribution, of environmental protection, um, there's really very little point in talking about technology. So thank you. All right, uh, if we could unmute and uh, you can use your cheer, your cheer button. Woo -hoo.